Uh, welcome to the shop tonight. So what we're going to do tonight is we are building a jig. Um, kind of a scrap wood project here is what I'm going with for now. Um, I've seen some fancier ones, but I don't have time for that. And I don't have a decision on how fancy or what I want to do yet for this. So, um, but basically we're making a cutting board juice groove jig. So I found this piece, which is straight, which is what we want for a juice groove jig. So we're going to cut this into strips. This will be our actual fence. Um, we'll get there at some point. But to start, I've got this piece, and this is going to be the bottom of my jig. I'll show you. It'll make sense in a little bit here. Um, we're going to first start by cutting this to the same length as that guy over there. So let's get that done. Keep your miter gauge down over where it's supposed to be on the saw or you hang it up on a wall or somewhere else. Uh, let me know in the comments. Probably the only part of the saw that I actually keeps where it's supposed to be, unless I have the fence, my longer fence hooked to it. Then it goes up on the wall because I don't take it apart and back and forth. So, all right, let's get rid of that guy. So, what we're basically going to be doing is taking these and cutting them down to strips, this one taking this one, cutting them down the strips, and then making them into L's like this. So that we will put it up against the cutting board, and the router will run right along this. Um, I have made these, these are 22 inches long. The biggest cutting board I tend to do is 24 inches, but this will still work for that. I'll show you how that is when we get to that point. Um, at least I believe it will. I hope it will. If not, we're probably going to get that piece of board up and do some work with that one. <laughs> so, but I saw a video and it's supposed to work. Okay, what we're going to do now is we need these ones to be exactly an inch and three quarters because our plywood is a little less than three quarters, so a little under an inch and three quarters wide, so that way it's just about an inch off of our plywood, or our cutting board, sorry. So let's go ahead and get our things set up for that. I mean table saw. Inch and I will probably just go a curve under. You know, and realistically, if it's not exact, I mean, we're talking about the alignment of a juice groove, eighth of an inch. Nobody is ever going to notice that. So let's go ahead and get these bashed out quick. Okay, for these, it will be the height of our fence. Now, cutting boards are already an inch and a half thick most of the time. So, I am actually going to go to two and a half inches because I have enough on this board to do that. And that will leave me one inch above plus the three-fourths inch on that. So, one and three-fourths inches above our cutting board should be plenty. And if I ever did a thicker one, we would still be covered. Let's go ahead and get these ripped up for us. Notice, always using the push block. When I got down to that last one, switched over that push stick to keep it against the fence because that was a little too close. Closer than I want to get my fingers to that spinning blade, so. Here we go. We've got 
This here will be our, ba our base, our fence, I'm sorry. This will be our base. We're gonna go ahead and glue that like that. And then that will go right against our cutting board. Um, we could make two of them shorter. I don't do cutting boards bigger than 12 inches typically. So I'm gonna debate that, but let's go ahead and I'll get set up for gluing and everything and we'll get back and we'll show you that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and glue these up. It's gonna be the short end down, that on top of there. So basically, I'm just gonna flip that down, glue it, clamp it, screw it. So just looking at what way is better here. Doesn't really matter, I think they're all flat. So I am using Gorilla Glue. Um, Again, it's kind of a scrap wood project. This is some glue I've kind of switched over to tight bond, um, but I haven't had any trouble with the Gorilla Glue. Uh, the main reason for using it for this project is from what I've read, it tacks up a little quicker than the tight bond two and the uh, three. And that's why people like it. Now I don't need the three because I don't need this to be waterproof. So I think we're just gonna go with some two. The, I mean, Gorilla Glue, I don't need two because I have this. So really it's just using up something I have in the shop. Kind of like this whole project is. Uh, go ahead and flush it on one end. I'll go ahead and clamp it. And make sure it's nice and flat also. These Irwin clamps are nice. You know, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and you know, I've got a hodgepodge of clamps around here. This is the first set I ever bought though. And so far I have liked them every bit of the way. So um, they're kind of my go-to if I need a clamp to do something that's within this range. Um, or a lot of time clamping down my uh, planer or some other tool, I will use these because they hold well. I am betting it is time for a new bit. Somehow see if I can sharpen that one. I don't know. I have a Harbor Freight drill sharpener. I've never used it. We might see. So uh, I'm just using some one and five eighths screws. Again, <laughs> screws I've had around forever. Um, and I figured you do want them counter sunk up in there. And I figured since they're not going to go through the top of this, and hopefully they don't split anything because I've pre drilled it. So. There is one. I will go ahead and get the other three done, and then we'll show you how we use those. So we've got our four fences. We've got our cutting board. Uh, this is the smaller of the two I'm going to do right now. And then we've got a 16 by 28 inch sheet of plywood underneath here. Um, most of the people I saw do this kind of tended to screw them right down to their workbenches. <laughs> and... I don't want to. Um, not that I have anything against that, but I just, my top is sacrificial, but I still want to keep it as long as I can, as in good a shape as I can. So, we're just not going to do it that way. So, what we do, we take one, we line it up perfectly with the edge here. And in fact, I'm going to start over here because what I want to do is I want to go to the outside edge and make that flush right there. So, I'm going to start with that one and make that flush. What we can do, and the only reason I'm doing that is because that gives me the most, I should have made this board a little wider. Um, it'll be okay, 
I still have enough room to clamp. I just, thinking about it now, should have made it a little wider. So if you're doing this, maybe make it wider if you want to clamp that down. Um, we're going to go ahead and grab our extender. I'm really hoping I don't split the plywood. That's another thing maybe I should have done is drilled it, pre-drilled it. Um, so if you're doing this, maybe pre-drill a couple holes in those bottom pieces. I could go get a set of drill bits that goes into this, but I don't have them in the shop. And I don't really like them. So we're just going to go ahead and put this in here. Like I said, hopefully it holds. And the other thing I can do is take this all the way to one end. So let's see, it would be right about there. We're just going to go right there. We don't need it to be perfect. We're going to go enough room to give me a clamping room behind there. And I'll show you what we're going to do here. So, okay. My bigger board, my 24 by 12, I would have to center. The reason I went 16 inches is I don't, I gave myself a little extra room, but I don't go much over 12 inches because that's what my planer fits. If I did, I'd probably have to get a new. Make a new jig is what I was going to say. So, okay. Little up there, little up there. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly square. I just want that there because these are all going to square up with each other. See? So that squared up right there. Just go ahead and put a second screw in anywhere here. that nice and square Okay, next one right here, I think you're getting the pattern here. We'll have some overhang, but that's because it'll work for longer, bigger cutting boards. Um, also, I made all four of them the same size. I technically, technically, because I don't go wider than 12 inches, and I still may do this one day, I could take these end ones and I could cut them down. Really, all I've given myself is four of them that will work on any side. Okay, and our last one right here. Now, remember how I said, you know, there's a little gap here, or if it's not perfect, it won't matter. And I'll show you why here in one second, why that won't matter. Let's avoid that knot. Okay, that's flat, good. Put that out there, out the way. Okay. So the reason we're not worried about this one inch gap is I'm going to use my trim router. You could use any router, but if it has a round base, that's preferred. If it has a flat side, you're probably going to want to reference off the round side. If it has a square base, this becomes a little more difficult. You may want to look at getting a round base for it or making one. So uh, the reason being is so basically why I've cut things the way they are. This fence is exactly one inch on every side from the cutting board, which makes my juice groove one inch in on my board. That's how I liked it. That's what looked good. If you wanted it further or less, you know, I could go to where it's two inches in. I just don't think that would look good by flipping these around. Those are my two options right now is basically get it all the way out here and go around. Now, the other part of this is, as I said, in these corners, I don't need that piece there. We're not going to touch it anyway. So 
we're still okay referencing. Um, as I said here, I can leave this moving, but what I think I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna throw a clamp right here on the end of it. Keep it from moving around. And I have enough room on this side. Uh, if I really needed to, I could go in here on this board. Um, but yeah, now we don't move around, we're good. I'm just using a, I guess it's a cove bit, a bull nose. Um, and then I need to look it up. So I'm gonna, I'll be right back with you on the direction I wanna go. I wanna go clockwise, I know it now. So um, I'm gonna go make sure in a video or on a, a line, but basically you wanna make it so that the bit is pulling the router into the fence. If you go the other way, you're going to have to fight it and keep it against that fence and you have the potential of it going into the middle of your board, screwing things up and all that. So um, I'm gonna look that up quick. We'll get this plugged in, we'll get some safety gear and we'll, we'll do one of these. My router, it is clockwise I need to run. I think most routers are gonna be the same, but you'll wanna check yours. Not counterclockwise, so clockwise. Um, we're just gonna plunge it in nice and easy. I'm gonna turn the speed down a little bit on my routers. So hopefully we don't burn anything. And uh, my last passes will probably be nice shallow passes. Um, there are much better bits out there than what I'm using. I need to invest in that side yet. So um, some white side or some bits, bits with Astro coating is where I probably am gonna go if I keep doing cutting boards, which I really enjoy doing. So I'm probably gonna keep doing them. Um, but right now I'm just using a more inexpensive set to get to learn. So here we go. Let me show you how that looks in here. If you check that groove out, right around, look at those nice corners. A touch of tear out right there, but I think we can sand that away nicely. Just a little bit of burning in that corner there. Otherwise, it went right along that edge nicely. Touch of burning there, maybe I can sand that off. A little bit over here in this corner. Now, one of the things I did hear from somebody, and I see right here, we got just a little, a little off, but I mean, it's, it's so minimal. I think if I just give that a little sanding, we'll take that bump out of there and be set. So there's the overall picture of that cutting board. I'm still gonna round over some things. I still gotta sand it. I mean, this cutting board's got a ways to go, but that is our juice groove jig. And then uh, basically to, like that big cutting board there, which is about four to six inches longer, is gonna go right in here too. And we'll just unscrew these over here, move it out. Um, they are the same width. You can tell they're the same same board. I glued them all up together. So move this one out and we'll be we'll be all set. So again, thanks for watching. I'll go ahead and pull this guy out of there and show it to you. There we go. Nice. Again, as usual, I always appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to my channel. Um, we're gonna keep doing more jigs like this. Um, you know, as inexpensive as we possibly can. That's one big sheet of plywood I bought and I've made, I think two, three jigs already now out of it. Um, I forget what the first one was, but that's what we're gonna keep doing. And I've got plenty more on that sheet. 
um, to do a couple more. And then I have a nicer sheet of birch we're going to do a future project on a crosscut sled. So uh, again, subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.